Mm-hmm. Okay, what's going on guys? It's Nando back with one more video. Thank you for stopping by again. I appreciate it. Like always, I appreciate it, I appreciate it, I appreciate it. Hit that like button even before you watch the video because, hey, it's free. And then hit that subscribe button right after you watch the video because, hey, that's also free. Free subscriptions all year round for iNando TV. Um, anyway, so Fitbit Charge 3 Special Edition. Here's my take on it. Here's my review on it. Here's what Nando thinks on it or thinks about it. Um, who's this for? This, this is from a casual user's perspective. You see my last video, I kind of talked a little bit about that. Um, I'm not someone that really does a lot of fitness. I should, but I don't, sorry. Um, but I'm someone who cares about my steps. I'm someone who cares about how well I sleep. And I'm someone who cares about how my heart rate's doing here or there. Um, so with that being said, is this a good buy? Is this worth it? Um, is this worth the upgrade from the Charge 2 HR? Um, if you're upgrading from the Charge 2 HR, Ask yourself the following, is touchscreen that important? And is water resistance, waterproofing that important? If both of those answers are yes, then yes, absolutely upgrade to the Charge 3 HR. If those are eh, I could do without it, then save your money and keep the Charge 2. So far in using the special edition Fitbit Charge 3 for over a week, um, I've only taken it in the shower once. Um, I haven't really cared about the fact that I can now swipe up and down the menus. Let me show you guys real quick. Sorry about the focusing, but see, look, you see this? I can go up and down. So that's cool. Okay. Don't, don't judge my lack of fitness. Okay. Don't judge it. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, but you can scroll and you, you know, whatever. It just feels more intuitive. But it's still a Fitbit. It's not an Apple smartwatch. Um, it's not a Samsung smartwatch. It's not even the Fitbit Versa, which is more of a smartwatch. So I think on the charge form factor, I think it's not really needed and I don't think you really gain anything for having it. I think it's more of a novelty, like great, thanks, I, I'm glad it's there. Anyways, um, so yeah, the, the touch functionality isn't that important. Um, it adds to the experience a little bit. Now, what I find to be a lot more important is the water resistance and waterproofing. If you're someone who swims, if you're someone who is constantly um, in and out of dealing with water and things like that. Yeah, sure. That that extra peace of mind is going to go a long way. I personally appreciate that very much. Um, and then you got to look at it from the perspective of there's two models. There's a regular edition model, which I think is about $149.99. And then there's a special edition model that's about $30 more expensive. So is Fitbit Pay worth the $30 extra dollars? That's all you get for going from one edition to the next is Fitbit Pay. Personally, I like uh, smart payments, um, but what I don't like about smart payments on this is that, so you have to have a PIN number obviously to secure your information. You don't want people to just willy-nilly take this and then hold it next to a, uh, see how it says tap to unlock? So when you tap to unlock, it now asks you to scroll up and down to your PIN. Um, I don't like that. Uh, it takes a long time. Um, the amount of time it takes for that to happen, you could easily pull out your wallet if you have your wallet with you or use your smartphone if you have your smartphone with you. Um, so I don't like that. And honestly, I think that the 30 extra dollars for that is not worth it. I've used it a few times and it becomes more cumbersome than it becomes um, utilitarian. So that's the only difference uh, between one model or one edition and the other. And then... Um, I think that the way that they went about the form factors is a little bit deceiving. Sure, you get more screen real estate, but if you have the actual Fitbit off and you're looking at it, you can see where the borders, the, the bezels, if you will, start and end, and it leaves a lot to be desired. You, it, to me, I wonder, like, could you not have extended those bezels? That's the same conversation we have over and over again with um, smartphones or about smartphones and tablets and laptop screens and things like that. If you're gonna have a screen in today's day and age and you still somehow incorporate such a massive bezel, um, you have to ask yourself, like, were you lazy? Um, is the technology just not there? And if that's the case, I mean, save your money, get yourself a Charge 2 or keep the Charge 2 instead of getting the Fitbit Charge 3. In terms of other things like heart rate, uh, I think the heart rate on the Charge 3 is a little better than it is on the Charge 2, so that's cool. I think that the, um, the notifications on the Charge 3 are a lot better than the Charge 2, so if you care about the smart functionality of it, notifications are cool. I think they have quick reply now as an option, even though it's going to be kind of small and tedious. You still have that function to say like OK or no or something like that. Um, you have some functionality with like Spotify and things like that. 
Uh, but that's pretty much it. It's it's really, in my opinion, it's Fitbit reaching for a few extra people that they know they didn't get because it wasn't waterproof and people that swim and are active around water. And it's for people out there who probably have a really old Fitbit and are looking for a reason to upgrade. The problem is in today's day and age, you're getting a lot, a lot of people that are starting to understand and accept the perks of having a full on smartwatch. Sure, there's tons of people out there that don't care about all that smart functionality, but if you're already gonna shell out almost $200 for something like this, you could very well shell out another 150 maybe, and get something that just gives you a lot more bang for your buck. But that's my opinion on it. Um, I'm torn, I just don't see too much there for me to want to keep it. Let me touch base a little bit on battery life. Fitbit claims up to seven days of battery life. I think the battery life claim is very, very good. Granted, I'm not a typical typical user. I'm not using notifications or alarms or things like that uh, on a daily basis, but I have gotten really, really good battery life. So for that reason and that reason alone, I mean, I might keep it because my Charge 2 battery life is kind of shot. Um, but yeah, that's my kind of take on, on the Fitbit Charge 3. Looks good. It's much more streamlined. The screen's a little bigger. They removed the button. It just looks sleeker. But is it worth it? And in particular, is the special edition Fitbit Charge 3 worth the extra $30 or for the Charge 2? Let me know in the comment section below if you have a Charge 3, if you're considering getting a Charge 3, which Fitbit you do have, or if you're an Apple Watch or a Samsung smartwatch person, maybe even a Pebble from back in the day. And then like always, hit the like button, leave the comments. I'll try to respond and get back to you guys as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching this video. And like always, stay geeky. Peace, salute, and adios.